Hey, y'all. Well, of course, it ran over on my beauty channel, and I would started talking about uh, kind of a New Year's Eve message, but that I wanted to put it on my Pure Bible channel. So this is on my Pure Bible channel. Um, so I want to get right to it, because y'all know I can just talk and jab and jab and jab. And I want to get this to you. And I want it to be an encouragement to you. I want it to be an encouragement to me when I later look back on this. You know, this year, um, as we go forward, I want to be able to... Um, sorry, I'm sweating, y'all. Um, I just showered, and it's always so hot right after I shower. And do my hair and all that, and I'm all, I just get all sweaty, so it's just pulling my hair off my, my neck. Um, but, um, as you go through the year... If you have discouraging moments, one of the best things you can do, that's why I encourage y'all to journal. Uh, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be just a little journal. It can be inside your day planner, which I encourage everybody to keep a day planner, keep up with what's going on in your life, because you'll end up needing to know that stuff later. Um, and also, when you take notes about what's going on spiritually in your life, you'll need to know that too. Sometimes you'll be so full of joy and... Um, and that's good, but you um, and you can stay in a place of joy. You can't stay in a place of happiness. What's the difference, you ask me? Happiness is when everything goes your way and you're happy. You're comfortable, everything's great. That is not the truth of life. Jesus said, uh, in this world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, because I've overcome the world. And you're like, yeah, but while we're here, yes. Not just because he's overcoming at the cross so that we do not suffer the wrath of God and we get to go to heaven and be with him forever. That's enough. But guess what else? While we're still here, he has overcome the world. Well, what does that mean? It means he can give you joy in the midst of those places that aren't happy. And you think, yeah, okay, um, so you're faking it. It's like, mm, maybe a little or maybe it's real. Maybe start out faking it at first, just trying to be happy. And then when you will stay focused on the Lord, you will see the joy of the Lord is where you get your strength. It's where you get your endurance. When, when we go through these trials and these tribulations, when we come under attack and the enemy tries to mess with our mind and the Bible tells us, uh, 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 take every thought captive and make it obedient unto Christ. And that's not just talking about if you have uh, something put in front of your eyes that's vulgar or profane or obscene, that you take it, those thoughts captive and don't lust or whatever. That's not all that was talking about. It was also talking about any time the enemy attacks your thoughts. Because remember, Jesus in the book of Matthew was real clear. You've heard it said, don't commit adultery, but I tell you, don't even lust in your heart. You've heard it said, do not commit murder, but I tell you, do not even have hate in your heart. What is he talking about? It starts in the mind, and then you start keeping things on your mind until you act on it. And some people say, well, I never did act on it. It's still not okay because Christ is telling you right there. He judges your thoughts. He is the judge, and he does judge. He rightly divides good and evil. The Holy Spirit can do that for you. He can give you discernment to rightly divide what is right and what is wrong by God's standards, not man's standards, not even by your own standards. And all of a sudden you'll start be like, is that me? No, that's Holy Spirit comforting, coaching, um, convicting sometimes. And so that's the three C's, comforting, coaching, and convicting. I'll have to do a special study on that. That's kind of cool. But anyway, that would be a God moment. But one of the things I want to point out to you is in the midst of the different things that we go through in life, one of the big things we actually really want is peace. We just want peace. That In that peace, you can find joy beyond measure. And that peace that passes all understanding is only given to us by the Holy Spirit who lives within us. And when we focus on Jesus, when we focus on the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, He can give us that. And we forget that. And that's why it's good to go back and look at things. Go back and look at your journal. Go back and look at the videos. Go back and talk to your best friend who knew you last year and says, you know, this happened last year. Let me remind you. And they can remind you of all the good things and of all the places where God brought you through a dark time. And you think, you know, if he can bring you through before, he can bring you through again. And people say, yeah, but it got really bad. But he brought you through. 
you're here. And our comfort and our desire is not for this world. Again, Jesus promised us this world, you will have troubles. Uh, if I hadn't died on the cross, you would forever. But um, he's gone to prepare a place for us, and he's going to personally come back and take each one of us at the moment of death. He doesn't send angels. He personally comes himself, and he takes us to be with, a, be with him where he's at. That's John chapter 14 also. But let me read John chapter 14, 26, 27. John chapter 14 is a great way to start off your year. The book of John. If you're looking for, hey, Beth, what is a good Bible study or devotional series I could do just by myself? Get the Gospel of John and just read a little bit every single day until you're done. And then start over. Okay, so verse 26 and 27 says, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the, God, whom the Father will send. That right there tells you they're separate entities, but they're still God. In my name. And who's talking? Who's my name? Jesus, who is God will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said to you. What is that? He will bring to your mind the Word of God. He will bring to your mind times He spoke to your heart in a certain circumstance or during a prayer or through a friend who is wise counsel who said something to you and you realize that was the Holy Spirit bringing the Word of God to me. Um, so this, I, I, and I go, try to remember to go write that down somewhere, put it in my phone under notes or something, because you will forget. The enemy wants you to forget, and just our human natures to forget. Um, but it says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. What a great thing for us to live out this year because there will be viruses there will be diseases there will be financial disasters there will be um, natural disasters these things will always occur there will always be trouble and, and people say don't speak it Beth I don't mean it on my own life I'm trying not to claim that for myself but we just know this is life the troubled uh, sin ridden earth that is cursed since the fall that is what goes on and more um, but we can still have peace in the midst of it all because Jesus says, I leave you a different kind of peace. And I promise you, you don't need to be afraid and um, you don't need to be troubled. If you're acting troubled or feeling concerned or worried, go read this over and over. That's what I have to do. Take every thought captive. That's what Second Corinthians said. Every thought and make it obedient to the Lord. What does that mean? Stop listening to the enemy telling you to be afraid. That is never going to be from God. Stop listening to the enemy telling you that that um, you need to be troubled or that you need to be angry or that unless it's righteous anger from the Holy Spirit because something has truly been uh, unjust and even then you let the Lord handle it. It's his to avenge, he says, not not ours. But um, there is a righteous indignation. It's God's level of anger. It's, we're, we're human level anger. So I, I wouldn't worry about... <laughs> Can you discern the two? Yes, if you feel something's truly wrong, that would be the Holy Spirit. I'm not. I'm talking about when you lose your temper. People have said before, "Oh, Jesus lost his temper in the in the temple." No, he didn't. He didn't lose his temper. He was in full self control. He sat down and made a whip, which was I think it's th the three uh, braided one, which that would take a long time. He didn't fly off. And it says he turned over the tables. That doesn't mean he went run flip. You know, that's how we think of a human temper. I think he walked up to it and turned him over and turned him over and turned him over and said, none of this in the house of God, this is supposed to be a house of prayer. This is not supposed to be a place where you are making a profit. And some people say, well, what that really meant was um, the scales were off and you should be fair in your, in your uh, financial dealings. Well, yes, that's true. But that is not what that was saying. He made it very, very clear it was that you were purchasing things in the church and that's why you were there. In other words, you were there to buy and sell. You were not there to pray and worship. And I think we need to take that into account today. I'm not saying you can't have a library or a purchasing area off to the side for after church where someone can buy a Bible or buy a devotional or something like that. I'm not trying to be overly, you know, critical or uh, but but beware of it i mean that isn't what you're there for uh can you pick one up on the way out sure i mean i think that's fine you you pray about it but that's one scripture another one is isaiah 9 6 and this is a jesus is god verse it says for unto us a child is born a son is given and that by the way coincides with matthew 1 21 where we see that and um we see jesus's name come up as jesus who is the one who will save um 
his people from their sins. We see the name come up Emmanuel in uh, Matthew 1.23 where it says and he will um, be called Emmanuel because it means God with us. And then here it says, uh, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor. Holy Spirit's called that. Mighty God. Very clear, he's God. Everlasting Father. The Father's called that. And Prince of Peace. Do you know what? I think it's really wonderful to know that God is the one who gives peace, and specifically Jesus Christ. All right, and then 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the, this all-surpassing power is from God, not us. Y'all, we can't have this peace on our own. You can't. You have to stop and be alone with God. I have a bracelet on that reminds me. It's constantly reminding me, and it says, Be still. That's all it says, and it just reminds me. This is good to have this interaction sometime and have interaction with my husband and my friends, but it's much more important that I have daily time. This morning I got up and just opened the Word of God and He showed me some things. And, you know, people say, you just opened it to wherever and you think that's God. I think you can open the Bible anywhere. And yes, it's, it's God everywhere. It's not just red letter. Everything in the Bible, all the letters that were written, all the Old Testament history, everything that's there, God inspired man to write that. That is God guiding that hand the whole way, including the words in red. Um, but yeah, I think that we have to remember that God doesn't want us to be strong in ourselves. We are not all sufficient. He is. He wants us to be dependent on Him and that we're jars of clay that He pours Himself into and then we can be used of Him to do His work and be involved in such an amazing work. And the peace that He will give us in that is something only He can give. And can I tell you how you get it? By being in His presence. How can you be in His presence? Y'all have to take that time. Take that time every single day and all day long really to just speak to Him and listen for Him and be in His presence. And he will give you joy and peace no matter what you're going through. I may need y'all to remind me of that this year. So y'all have a good year. I love you. And I will talk to you again soon.